So key point number one is that only four mammalian species out of over 5,000 ever get heart disease. And those four are the only ones that don't produce their, vitamin, their own vitamin C. What's up guys, John Anthony here from John Anthony Lifestyle. Today I wanna to do a video on the topic of health and I wanna go over Linus Pauling. Uh, he had a theory on using vitamin C to prevent heart disease according to him. Okay, and I wanna make a disclaimer, this is not meant to be medical advice. Please consult your doctor or healthcare professional uh, for these different matters. However, I'm gonna review how Linus Pauling thought that you could prevent heart disease, which is the number one killer in the world, okay? Before we continue, please subscribe below if you are new to the channel or not yet a subscriber. We offer straightforward, practical, no bullshit dating advice. So please subscribe and press the notification bell if you are not yet a subscriber. And if you want to get to an advanced skill level in the game and have it finally all make sense, wouldn't that be nice? Jump on a free 30 minute call with me. I'll walk you through how I can get you very good in a very short period of time. Okay, so Linus Pauling, he won two different Nobel Prizes, I think in biology and chemistry, okay, but extremely smart guy. He looked at all the mammalian species, there's over 5,000 of them, I think 5,400 or something like this. Which species get heart disease? It's only four out of over 5,000 different species of mammals. Those four species are humans, orangutans, fruit bats, and guinea pigs. Okay, so those four, get heart disease, all the rest don't. And he looked at what's the major difference between those four species and all the rest of mammalian species that don't get heart disease. And the major difference is those four species do not produce their own vitamin C, okay? And all the rest of the species of, of mammals do. So that's key point number one, that that tiny little subset of mammals that get heart disease don't produce their own vitamin C. So then he looked at archeological records and he found that, well, first of all, humans used to produce their own vitamin C and there was a mutation back before the soils were over farmed, okay? And people were getting adequate vitamin C from their diets, from dietary intake. And there was a mutation within human biology where we stopped producing vitamin C, okay? And then we moved into climates that were colder and were on ships and stuff like this and started developing scurvy Okay, scurvy happens from a lack of vitamin C. And so later now in the modern day, we have the Food and Drug Administration putting the recommended daily allowance of vitamin C to 70 milligrams, which as we'll find out later is vastly inadequate. But that 70 milligrams prevents acute scurvy, okay? So he looked at the archeological archeolog records. Prior to this mutation, there was no records of heart disease in humans, okay? Which is more direct evidence that when we, when we were producing vitamin C internally, otherwise known as endogenously, we weren't getting heart disease, okay? So then he looked into the technical aspect of why would this be important. So what he found was that when we're producing our own vitamin C, or any mammal for that matter, it, vitamin C synthesizes collagen and it keeps your artery walls intact. When there's a lack of vitamin C or inadequate vitamin C, then we evolved a backup mechanism utilizing cholesterol, okay, and it, and it uses the sticky plaque lipoprotein A, and there's that sticky plaque buildup, and that blocks the arterial wall, causes a, a blockage, which leads to a heart attack. Okay, so what he found was it's not vitamin C that's the culprit. It's the buildup of sticky plaque, which comes as a backup mechanism due to the lack of vitamin C and inadequate vitamin C circulating in our bodies. However, cholesterol is not the culprit. As a lot of people throw around in the modern day, they think, oh, you need to reduce cholesterol and that'll help prevent heart disease. Cholesterol, as we saw, is the backup mechanism that was evolved due to the lack of, of vitamin C and having inadequate vitamin C. But he looked at bears, and bears have like five times higher cholesterol than the highest cholesterol humans, and bears, never get heart disease, okay? So key point number one is that only four mammalian species out of over 5,000 ever get heart disease. And those four are the only ones that don't produce their, vitamin, their own vitamin C. Key point number two is the fact that humans never used to get heart disease either back when we, produ when we were producing our own vitamin C internally, okay? Key point number three is that cholesterol is not the problem. It's actually a lack of vitamin C. Cholesterol just becomes a problem when it's being used as a backup mechanism and that leads to sticky plaque accumulation and blocking the arterial walls. 
Key point number four, he did a study with orangutans who have shorter lifespans, giving one a high vitamin C diet and one a normal diet. The high vitamin C diet did not die of heart disease. The normal diet did. Okay, so this is all like overwhelming evidence that obviously if we just produced our own vitamin C, we probably wouldn't have heart disease. Okay. So then he looked further and thought, what is the ratio of how much, what is the average like kilogram size or pound size, what is the average weight and mass of each mammalian animal and versus how much vitamin C is producing internally. So what is the ratio of its weight to how much it produces internally? And he found like a golden ratio. And when you apply that to the average mass of humans, he found that humans need 2,300 milligrams of vitamin C per day, 2.3 grams, okay, which is far greater than the 70 milligrams advocated by the Food and Drug Administration. Okay, with the RDA of being 70, which is vastly inadequate. And just as a side note, it makes matters even more complicated and actually funny when you see something like orange juice, 100% vitamin C, and people think, oh, I'm gonna be very healthy by drinking this orange juice. Okay, but people don't understand the notion of glycemic index, which is how you know, quickly your insulin response is to attenuate your blood sugar levels. And if, so each food has a glycemic index score, orange juice is actually very high, which is bad, because it activates your insulin response over time that can lead to type 2 diabetes and metabolic syndrome. Okay, and for the record, drinking a glass of orange juice is tantamount to eating a candy bar in terms of the response in your, in your blood sugar. So, uh, <laughs> but most people don't know anything about health in the first place, so who cares, right? Um, but going back to the matter at hand, how would we go about getting 2,300 2, milligrams of vitamin C per day? Okay, you can buy the 1,000 milligram vitamin C tablets. So is it just as simple as taking two or three of those? No, it is not, okay, because now we have some further complications. Number one, the half-life of vitamin C is 30 minutes, which means if you take 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C, 30 minutes later, you're down to 500. 30 minutes later, you're down to 250. 30 minutes later, you're down to 125, and so on and so forth. So it's rapidly being expelled from the body. Number two, you can only have a maximum blood plasma concentration of 750 milligrams in your bloodstream. So really, the secret here is that you must take vitamin C throughout the day, and I take it in the, in the time release version. So you, you can buy the 1,000 milligram time release, and there's no tolerable upper limit on vitamin C because it is water soluble, so you can take it in very high quantities, and you should be taking it all throughout the day with the time release version so that you have an adequately circulating supply of vitamin C. It's also chemo protective, it also assists uh, preventing glaucoma and, and, and you know cancers and various things as well. So it, it has a whole host of benefits. It's the, it's the primary water soluble antioxidant, okay? So all that being said, um, first of all, I think the most important thing we could do is come up with some kind of like slow release vitamin C either supplement or you know genetic modification where we're producing it internally again and I think heart disease would be completely eliminated hypothetically according to Linus Pauling and on top of that all we can really do is, is supplement however he took things further and he found that uh, intravenously inserting vitamin C in the, to the tune of like 10 grams or more can actually greatly delay uh, death and also suffering, attenuate suffering from cancer. Okay, so he, he partnered with this Dr. Hoffer from Canada and they found that you can get up to like a 16X extension of life for terminally ill cancer patients when administering uh, things like 10 grams of vitamin C a day, especially combined with other nutrients like niacin, which is vitamin B3 and things of this nature. Okay, so I'm going to link my supplement paper, it's 50 pages. It talks about bringing the major degenerative disease risks down to close to 0% for, for about $23 a month. But keep in mind as a medical disclaimer, again, this is not professional medical advice. Always consult your doctor or healthcare professional. This is just the results of my research and what I prepared for my parents in order for them to reduce disease risk and for myself to reduce disease risk in a practical, uh, cheap, cost-effective way, okay? so. I hope that was helpful. Check out the link to that paper in the description. Uh, I hope this was an interesting discussion with vitamin C. As one more final recap, he found that just four mammalian species out of over 5,000 get heart disease. Those four are the only ones that don't produce their own vitamin C. 
prior to us stopping producing our own vitamin C, us meaning humans, we never died of heart disease. In the experiment he did with the orangutans with a high vitamin C diet and a normal diet, the high vitamin C diet didn't die of heart disease. He also found that the cholesterol is not the problem, it's a backup mechanism that was evolved due to the lack of freely circulating vitamin C and it's, cholesterol is not the actual primary culprit as shown in the case of bears which have five times higher cholesterol and never die of heart disease. Okay, and then finally the ratio of how much we should be intaking and bring into our system is 2,300 milligrams. And then you have the half-life problem and the maximum blood plasma concentration problem, which can be mitigated with taking vitamin C steadily throughout the day, especially the time release version, and you can take it in high quantities, given that it is water soluble and there's no tolerable upper limit. Okay, and then finally, uh, the last point is being able to dramatically extend the lifespan of cancer patients when administering high dosages of intravenous vitamin C along with a cocktail of other things. If you want the research on that, look up Linus Pauling and Dr. Hoffer from Canada. Thank you so much for watching. And if you're not yet a subscriber, please subscribe below. Press the notification bell for new videos every single day. And if you'd like to master the game very quickly and get high levels of results very fast, jump on a free 30 minute call with me. As you can see, I am a intellectual wizard, you know, not to toot my own horn, but I've put in a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into health and longevity optimization as I did with poker, as I did with chess, and as I did with the dating game. Okay, it's just a system that can be optimized, and that is my specialty, hyperanalysis and optimization. So I hope that was helpful. Jump on that free 30-minute call if you want to learn how to take your dating results to an extreme very quick. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you on the next video. Take care. Some do it for the income, but we do it for the outcome. Some of us are active while others just let their mouth run. No doubt, son, this is not just about fun. We will not be outdone by these cowards who shout scum.